Well, right now on Up with Crumb, we're taking you outside as air quality improves across the region. We'll let you know when it finally reaches good levels. Spokane primary election results are rolling in throughout the morning. We have live updates for you every half hour, including who's leading for city council. And a Spokane Valley business is transforming this morning. Our Nicole Hernandez joins us from a former roller rink. Yeah, that's right. Roller Valley has been here in Spokane for almost 50 years, but soon it could be a storage facility. Up with Crim begins now. Well, hey there. Happy Wednesday in Lynn Northwest. Welcome to Up with Crem. I'm Tim Pham. This week, we want to introduce you to our newest team member to our show, our new anchor, Channing Curtis. Channing, Good morning. glad to have you here with us. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here and to be a part of the team. I know we've been chatting a little bit, so we're getting to know each other a bit more, and I've learned how much of a fan you are of decorating for the holidays, oh, and I am boy. here for it. I cannot wait. Is it too early to talk about Christmas? No. Never. <laughs> <laughs> we're on the same wavelength. Yes. I told Channing about all my Christmas trees. I won't tell you how many quite yet, but... Uh, <laughs> it's okay. more than one, more than two. <laughs> no judgment here. This is a judgment-free zone, Tim. I love it, yeah. Christmas, my favorite holiday. Same. What's your favorite holiday? Same, it's Christmas. Christmas? Yes. We're, get, we're gonna get along just fine. Oh yes, this is why we're homies already. <laughs> yeah. All right, we do have news to get to, so let's get right to it. We're jumping in right into our air quality coverage this morning because it's improved for unhealthy to sensitive groups now. Of course, it was unhealthy for everyone just yesterday. Now take a look at your screen because yesterday this map was mostly large blocks of red and now it's mostly orange. So you can see that improvement there. However, most of Stevens County is still coated in red along with parts of Ferry and Ponderay counties. Now a fire near in Chelum is the cause of that smoke. Now let's take a look at the two mornings side by side. So what you see on your left is live right now. And then on your right is what it looked like on Tuesday. You could see maybe some slight improvements, yeah. not too much, but still very, very hazy outside right now. Absolutely. It's one of those days where if you're thinking about maybe going for a morning jog or doing any type of extenuous yeah. outdoor activity, maybe take it inside for a little yeah, bit. Maybe run on the treadmill today if you have Good one luck. or go to the gym. Yeah, you know, whatever works. Let's get to Jeremy, though. Jeremy is tracking this for us. Uh, you know, hot and hazy today. Can we expect any relief anytime soon? Tim, I got a better idea. What's that? You just skip working out. <laughs> That's a better, that, I like that idea. I do too. <laughs> Sleep in. <laughs> yeah. Sleep in, skip working out. Catch the end of Up With Crumb. You know, you got you got options. But anyway, we're going to get you out the door with what to expect. We do get a bit of improvement in terms of air quality today, as they mentioned. That's good news. Uh, even better news, I was just looking at some of the forecast maps and what's going on with our air. We might even dip into moderate by the end of the show, but don't expect that to last all day. But hey, either way, I'm, I'm getting excited. Can you, can you hear it in my voice? 73 degrees right now. Temperatures back on the rise after cooling down to near 70 this morning in Spokane. You're at 70 in Coeur d'Alene and 73 in Sandpoint as your temps already start to jump. Mid to upper 60s out in central Washington. But here we sit unhealthy for sensitive groups. 113 on the AQI. That's a drop from where we were earlier this morning. I know it's only four points, but 13 is 13 away from being down into that moderate realm. So we are getting close to it, and it really just depends on how the wind blows. It is likely we dip into moderate and then see our air quality hover around unhealthy for sensitive groups with a lot of that smoke staying close to the wildfires themselves. Not until Thursday do we get a shift in the weather pattern that brings about more wind and blows out some of that smoke. But unfortunately, that also correlates with quite a bit more going on in the region. And one of those things is more chances of thunderstorms. We've seen quite a bit of thunder and lightning off to the north this morning. That's now moving into Bonner County, and we're going to keep an eye on that as it moves through and moves out. That'll be later on this afternoon, and that's when temps climb into the mid and upper 90s today. It's going to be another warm one. Right now, votes are being counted for Washington's primary elections. And we know you all want to see those results. So let's go ahead and take a look at the current results here locally. Starting things off, we're looking at Spokane County, Spokane City Council District 1, position 2. Now, right now, Jonathan Bingle holds the majority of votes with 47% there. And for position two, Zach Zapone is leading the race after the first ballot count with 43% of the vote. He's followed by Mike Lish with 29%. And there were actually so many candidates in this race that we needed a couple of screens to show you all of them. And moving on now to Spokane Valley City Council, current 
Spokane Valley Mayor Ben Wick is leading the race for position four after the first ballot count and 60% of the vote is in. Now for position five, incumbent Pam Haley has a strong lead at 48% of the vote there. And for the final race for Spokane Valley City Council, Laura Patton has a slight lead over incumbent Linda Thompson for position seven. A handful of other key elections are also up for a vote. That's right. Now to find out election results in your area, all you have to do is text us the word election. We'll send you a link right to your phone. That number is 509-448-2000. A business that's been open almost 50 years in Spokane Valley is now potentially closing. Yeah, and Nicole Hernandez is following this closely. She's live at Roller Valley now to explain why the skating rink is in danger. Good morning, Nicole. Yeah, good morning, guys. So back in 2017, when the longtime owner of Rolly Valley passed away, there was, you know, concern about the building closing down. But of course, the community rallied and a company called TDR Logistics ended up buying the building, saw how much the community supported Roller Valley and decided to keep it going as a roller rink. But now they're starting to reconsider that decision. So they actually put in a request with the city of Spokane Valley. You can see that here. It's a permit request to change this building into a storage facility. But local legacy boxing club owner Shad Kramer actually wants to buy the building instead. He says getting into the Roller Valley building would help their programs in the community get even bigger and he would keep the roller rink going on the weekends. I would keep the ring in the middle and put live musicians in the ring and then let everybody skate around the ring and it'd just be the coolest. And coming up, I'll also explain why Roller Valley closing could have a negative impact on local children at risk in this area. Live in Spokane Valley, I'm Nicole Hernandez. Time now for your morning rush. More news in less time. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention is issuing a new temporary moratorium on evictions. So the new order expires on October 3rd and it covers counties experiencing substantial or high levels of COVID-19 spread. 11 million people stay in their homes, 6 million families to be secure in housing, where those children will be able to start school in the next few weeks and not have to worry about where they're going to sleep. Experts say that would currently include about 80% of U.S. counties or 90% of the population. A Chatteroy family is seeking answers to what caused all three of their family dogs to die suddenly last week. Now, the family says it happened after they swam in the Little Spokane River next to their home. They believe blue-green algae may be the cause. So we look to the WSU College of Veterinary Medicine for answers. The problem with blue-green algae is it's actually um, a bacterial toxin that can affect dogs and it can be really quite deadly to dogs. I think it can be really hard to know. There are case reports of dogs dying paracutely, so really suddenly like that. Now the Washington State Department of Ecology will investigate samples from the river. And a new report shows the NCAA has fallen short of upholding its commitment to gender equity. This comes after footage of disparities between the NCAA men's and women's March Madness tournaments went viral this year. Now the reports recommend combining the final four games to one site and offering financial incentives to schools in order to improve women's programs. Now that's your morning rush, more news in less time. To let us know what's happening in your neighborhood, you can use the hashtag up with Krim on social media. Overnight, a new wildfire broke out in Okanagan County. What we know about evacuations for the Walker Creek fire this morning. And of course, we're going to take you outside after the break. Temperatures once again on the rise. It's a slow start, but by this afternoon, we're in the upper 90s. And by noon, oh, well, it's just hot. 88 degrees. That's warmer than we should be all day long.